Hey guys, and welcome and or welcome back to my channel. So it is day one of Foundation Hunt Week. If you did not catch the first one I did earlier this year, for the next five days, I'll be posting a new video of me trying out a new foundation, either a foundation that was sent to me, a foundation that you guys said you wanted to see, or just a foundation that I wanted to test out. And because today's should be interesting, let's just get into it. So I feel awkward right now because I'm sitting at a weird angle because that was the only way I could sit here with this in my hand. If you did not catch my PR unboxing video, then I did receive this in the mail from Jouer. It is their new foundation that they have just released. And I'm gonna struggle to open this and I'll be right back. Okay, so there is the inside of the box. It does come with a brush that they created to use with this foundation. And there are 16 of the 17 shades that they came out with. If you did happen to catch my PR unboxing video, I said I wasn't gonna attempt to play myself and then I would just use the darkest shade that this foundation comes in in this video. So I went ahead and swatched that on the back of my hand, but I also swatched the lightest shade that this foundation comes in. I mean, I have it, so I, I can at least show it, which is called Alabaster. So the lightest shade is Alabaster and the darkest shade, which I will be trying today, is Espresso. So here is alabaster the lightest shade and this is espresso the darkest shade so the only thing left to do is go over the specs of this foundation and then i can try it on all right so this foundation retails for 38 dollars for 0.68 fluid ounces and and the first thing that i see is that it says more shades coming Okay, supreme coverage, lightweight and long wearing, essential high coverage cream foundation creates an impeccable airbrush matte finish instantly. Simply smooth the small amounts onto your skin. All right, pretty much it just says it's matte, oil free, some extracts, paraben free, gluten free, vegan friendly. That's pretty much it. Normally I would just use a beauty blender, but I have the brush that they created to go with the foundation, so I figured why not use it, but I forgot to look up how much this costs on its own, so that will appear on the screen. I'm gonna use a beauty blender on the other side because I'm not feeling the brush at all. So here it is on my face. Um, as always, I only set one side of my face powder when I'm testing out a new foundation. And this week it is going to be this side. So this side has powder, this side does not. It is, it is 1026. And your girl would feel a little bit less depressed if I didn't have to go somewhere today. See the way scheduling went with filming foundation hunt week, I have to leave my house every day. And if this is how day one is kicking off, um, I'm a little nervous but I am going to go about my day and then come back later so you can see how this held up on my face and I can give my thoughts on this foundation and the shade range okay so I am back and it is now 609 that's pretty early to be calling it a day but I said you know let me just go ahead and get the flash test out of the way so that I don't forget and then I saw the flash test and then I was like I'm officially over this foundation hunt so wrap it up then. but anywho it's been almost eight hours I think and this is what my face looks like so this foundation really didn't claim to do that much it just said supreme coverage lightweight long wearing matte finish more shades coming that wasn't a claim but I'm just throwing that in there um now it is lightweight it's been about eight hours I still can't feel this on my face I would say it's it's 
pretty long wearing but it is starting to separate here around my nose don't mind this these are the swatches from earlier i left them on because i wanted to see like you know do they get darker throughout the day um you know some foundations will oxidize and stuff like that you can even see it on the back of your hand i feel like this pretty much looks like when i left earlier in the day um so i feel like what you get with these shades is what you get with these shades um what else oh um supreme coverage bruh I have tried a lot of foundations that say that they are a supreme, full, high coverage foundation, and it's like, you're pretty medium to buildable full coverage. This is a full coverage foundation, okay? Full, um, beauty marks are gone, can't see any of that, and this is one pump of foundation on my face. With that being said, this is too much coverage for me. Um, it doesn't feel thick on your face, but it, it's, it's just too much for me. I am someone who prefers more of a medium to buildable full coverage foundation because I want to be able to choose what I want to do that day. Do I want to keep it medium? Do I want to go down to even more of a sheer coverage? Do I want to build it to a full coverage foundation? With this, if you pick up this foundation, you only get one option, that, that's it. And the last thing is that it claimed to have a matte finish. Now it does have a matte finish. However, I don't know if it's just me, but um, does the side that I set, because if you remember, I only set one side of my face, which is this one, does this look oilier than the other side? I feel like my face is shinier on this side than it is on this side, which I did not set, which, I mean, could be beneficial if you don't have to powder this type of foundation. You know, it's that matte that you don't even need any extra powder to keep your face matte. However, hours later on both sides, I am starting to get oily. I would say I probably started looking like this about three, three hours ago. So I got a good five hours. Um, with a matte face. Now there is going to be some transfer with this foundation. You might not want to hug him in his designer shirt with this foundation on, at least not with any other type of, you know, transfer proof type of products on top of this foundation. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed it. I tried it with the brush that it comes with, which I still did not look up the price, but I believe it's like $24. Like I said, it'll appear on the screen. Um, I didn't like the brush. I just feel like this brush is kind of stiff. Um, so I switched over to, I said a beauty blender before, but it's not a beauty blender, it's the Tarte sponge. Um, and I feel like I liked how it applied better with the sponge and I feel like it got better color payoff with the sponge However, with both sides, I didn't like how this applied to my face. It seemed really splotchy Kind of patchy and it was just kind of hard to blend out which you know at one point I just gave up. I mentioned the more shades coming because That is the elephant in the room here. Now see Jouer, I'm gonna need you to have a seat, okay? You release 17 foundation shades, and the darkest one, maybe, maybe, could color match someone who's NW45, maybe, okay? And just as a reference, I'm NW55. Um, that's a problem. Now, here is the shade range, okay? That last row, and mind you, that last shade is the one that I have on my face right now, that last row is called Dark Deep. I mean, what else is there left for me to say that hasn't been said already? At this point, people, when they're speaking on these issues, are not speaking on it to raise awareness because who is not aware of this issue by now? Maybe there are some consumers out there who are not aware. I mean, it doesn't concern you, doesn't bother you, cool. But there's no company out there who's not aware that this is an issue. So at this point, people are not speaking on it to raise awareness. People are speaking on it because they're frustrated. They're tired of this whole fake idea of inclusivity where you give us the same 50 shades of medium and tan and then throw on one really bright color and one really dark color and say we're diverse because you're not, okay? Especially when that one dark color is this color, okay? And this, this doesn't even really look that pale, if we're gonna be completely honest. I mean, it looks pretty bright here because it's swatched on someone who was dark skin, but I'm looking at this shade and thinking of, you know, the pale skin out there, or at least, you know, comparing this to popular pale influencers, and it really doesn't even seem that pale. So this is why people are frustrated. I really just wanna know, like, who approved this? Like, who looked at this and said this was a foundation shade range, that this is good to go? Especially when not even a full month 
after this foundation has been out. It already says more shades coming. All right, this is about the third brand, I think, that has released a foundation this year and within weeks of it coming out because of all the things people have had to say about it are saying, oh, well, there are more shades coming in 2018. Why not just wait and release them all at that time? Because there's a big difference between releasing a crappy shade range and the the worst thing that people have to say about you is that you're uninclusive, that you don't care this, you're leaving them out that, blah, 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 and you waiting until you can put out a decent, if not brilliant, shade range, and the only things people can complain about are it creases, you know, it's not mattifying enough, all of which is subjective and differs from person to person, and one, you're making more money that way, and two, you don't have things like, oh, makeup brand A doesn't care about this skin tone, that skin tone, this, that, and the third. Like, I don't understand. It is what it is. I just want, like, whoever approved it, okay, just to look at this, look at this on my face, and you tell me, if we were out in public, would you be proud to say she's wearing Jouer's Essential High Coverage Cream, hmm? Would you look at someone else if we were standing right next to each other and be happy to say, oh, look at Shanine. She's wearing our newest foundation in the darkest shade. Would you? Because if not, then learn something from this. So with all of that being said, would I recommend this foundation only to anyone who likes full extreme coverage with a lightweight feel. I know there are people out there who like the look of full coverage but they don't necessarily like the feel of full coverage because it can oftentimes be very heavy on your face and that is one thing that I do have to give this foundation that it is probably one of the most full coverage foundations I have tried this year but still feels lightweight. I am someone who hates feeling any type of makeup on their face and eight hours later I don't feel anything. And, you know, my oil is starting to show through, but it's been almost like eight hours and only one side of my face is powdered, even though I think that side looks oilier. I don't know. Let me know if you see that. Um, but it's just too much for me. Like, it's too much for my makeup preference. Like I said, I like something that's buildable if I want a full coverage look. And with this, I just feel like if I wore this foundation with other makeup on top of it, it would just look too makeup-ish for me, which is cool for some other people, looks great for some other people, it's just not something that I would do. And I don't want you to think that I'm saying that just because of the whole, you know, uh, shade thing. Like, don't get me wrong, the shade thing irritates me, but if the shade thing was the only issue that I had with this foundation, I could still get on here and say, yeah, you know, the shade didn't work out for me, but this foundation does this, that, and the other. And, you know, I think it'd be great for everyone to go try. Um, I just, I don't. So that is it for this video. I hope seeing this on my face and hearing some of my thoughts is helping your decision whether or not you're gonna try this out for yourself. Let's make this something that we leave in 2017, okay? Any type of foundation shade range, 30 or less, let's not. Because your girl is just tired of walking around Long Island looking like this. I'm pretty sure I'm on someone's Snapchat or Instagram story because they saw me looking like this and think that I think this is what my actual shade is. You know, this is also why you don't like photograph people who are minding their own business because you don't know if they're looking crazy because they are crazy or if they're looking crazy because you know something like this you never know swatch just mind your business you know if it doesn't affect you like don't be an asshole but anyway um let me i don't have to drag everyone else sorry drag them. okay anyway um let's just not do it okay let's let's be better so make sure to thumbs up comment and subscribe down below thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one bye <laughs> Thank you.